In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the software Zotero. And this is very much going to be a beginner's guide on how to use it. As always, if you find this content useful, then please let me know by leaving a like on this video. And with that, let's get started. So as you're probably aware, Zotero is a completely free open source reference manager that's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux machines. To download Zotero, you simply head on over to their website. And I'll leave a link in the description below. On their homepage, you should see a big download button. You simply click on this and then follow the instructions to download your desired version of Zotero. I'm using a Windows machine for this tutorial, but the setup should be similar for Mac and Linux. It's then a case of following the setup wizard, which should take you just a few minutes. And then Zotero should be then successfully loaded onto your machine. Another thing I suggest that you do at this point is to install the Zotero connector for your internet browser. The Zotero connector is basically a plugin that makes it super easy to save references to your Zotero library. The connector is available for all major internet browsers. And again, I'll leave links below in the description for you to find the compatible one for your browser. I'm using Firefox today, so I'll install this version. All right, so now you should have the Zotero standalone program installed and the Zotero connector, which is everything you need. Let's have a look around the Zotero standalone program. The interface itself is rather minimal. To the left, you have the folders view. All references you create will be saved in your library. And then everything else is essentially a subfolder of that library. And I'll show you how to set up folders later on. There's also a My Publications section where you can add your own publications to your own Zotero profile page. A Duplicate Items section where any of the same references that are found more than once in your library will be highlighted and an unfiled items section. This will contain any references in your library that are not placed inside a collection. There's also a bin which contains any references that you've deleted. At the bottom left of the screen, you also see any tags, and I'll talk about these shortly. The main window in the middle will show the list of references, and I'm gonna show you how to add some references shortly. And the window to the right will show you the information for a specific reference once it is selected. At the top of the screen, you'll see various options. Here you can add new folders or a new library. Also, you can manually add a reference yourself or by using an identifier. You can also add notes and attachments. And finally, there is also an advanced search tool and a search bar so you can quickly find references in your library. All right, so that's a brief overview of the program itself. Let me now show you how to add references to Zotero. There are three main ways you can add references to Zotero either manually add the listing yourself, add the references via an identifier, or use the Zotero connector to add references directly from your web browser. To manually add a reference yourself, click on the new item button at the top. Then simply select the type of reference you want to add. I'll add a journal article as my example. It's then a case of manually filling out the information to the right. For this example, I'm going to use this review article I found online. And not to bore you, I'll speed up this process. All right, so now I've entered the key bits of information for my reference. And as you can see, it is now listed in the main window. So that's how you can add references manually. What about adding references via an identifier? Zotero can read different types of identifiers and search for relevant information online. Going back to my example of the review article, I can see that this has a PubMed identifier code here. So if I copy this, then if I select the add item by identify option inside of Zotero, I can then paste the code in and then press enter on my keyboard. And as you can see, Zotero has found this review article online and downloaded all of the information related to it. In fact, Zotero has entered a lot more information than I did manually, and it was a lot quicker than me. So if available, I always advise adding references this way rather than manually. Another useful thing Zotero does is download attachments if they are available. Since this review article was open access, Zotero has automatically downloaded the PDF of this manuscript. And I know this because there is a blue dot in the attachment column. Also, if I click the arrow next to the entry in the list, you can see the full text PDF. And if you double click on this, the file will then open. Another thing that Zotero commonly adds for PubMed entries is the link to the reference. So if you click on this, the exact web page will open in your browser. And now moving on to the final main way of getting references into the Zotero platform. 
and that's by using the Zotero Connector plugin that we installed earlier. So here I have the same review article open again on the PubMed website. To save this entry to Zotero, you simply find the connector options on your browser. In Firefox, this is in the top right corner. The button should say Save to Zotero. And if you click on this and then go back into the Zotero standalone program, you will see the entry has been added. And now I have three entries of the same reference. So this is a great time to show you the duplicate items area. If you click on the duplicate items option to the left, you will see all of the references that appear more than once in your library. If you select the duplicate item, Zotero will then ask you to choose the version of the item you want to keep as the master item. I recommend selecting the entry that has the most information for that reference. Then select the merge button at the top. The item will then be removed from the duplicate items page and you should then only see a single entry for that reference. Moving on, let me talk more about organizing your references. Starting off, I will show you how to create collections. Collections are basically folders where you can add specific references into. And as you can see, I've added a few more references to my library. If you want to add a new collection, you simply click on the new collection button at the top, then give your collection a name. It's then a case of going to your library and dragging the desired references into your collection. And note that references can be dragged into multiple collections. If you want to see the list of references in your library that are not yet in a collection, then simply go to your unfiled items area. Collections can also contain collections inside of them, known as subcollections. And you can also click and drag on collections to create subcollections yourself. Another way you can improve the organization of your references is to use tags. To add tags to a reference, you simply select it in your library, then on the right, go to the Tags tab. Then click on the Add button to create the tag. I'll add the tag Cancer to this reference. Once added, tags will then appear in the bottom left of your screen. And if you select a tag, you will see all of the references that have that tag associated with it. You can also change the tag color and position by right clicking on it and selecting Assign Color. The search bar at the bottom will also let you search the tags. It's also worth noting that when you import references into Zotero, such as via the Zotero connector, there may be some automatic tags added along with it. If you'd prefer to remove these and just have those tags that you've created yourself, then select the Actions button and click on the Delete Automatic Tags in this library. Another thing you can do to stay organized is to add related references. If you select a reference, you can then go to the Related tab. Here you can link references together. So maybe they are based on the same experiment or are written by the same lab. To add a related reference, you click on the add button and find the related reference in your library. Then click OK. The related reference will then be listed and then you can click on it to switch to it. A final thing you can do to stay on top of your references is to add notes to them. To do this, you simply select the reference and go to the notes tab. Then click on the add button and write out your note. Each note will then be saved as a child of that reference. So that's an overview of the Zotero software and the basics of using it. Let me now move on to using Zotero to create citations and a bibliography inside of Microsoft Word. After installing Zotero, you should see a Zotero tab in your Word software. If you don't see this, you can try reinstalling the Word add-in. And to do this in the Zotero software, you go to Edit Preferences. Then select the Cite button at the top and go to the Word Processors tab. You should then see the option to reinstall the Microsoft Word add-in. Try selecting this and then restarting the software. Back in Word, if you go to the Zotero tab, you should see a set of options like this. To add a citation from your Zotero library, click on an area in your Word document where you want to add the citation. Then click the Add slash Edit Citation option from the Zotero tab. For your first citation, the Document Preferences window will open. Here you can select a citation style to use. Zotero comes with various styles to use, but you can also import your own, which I'll show you later on in this guide. For this example, I will select the APA style and click OK. Now a search bar should be visible. Here you can type in the reference you are looking for. I find it easier to enter the author name, but you can also enter the reference name too. Once you find the correct entry, select it to add the citation. If you'd like to add more citations, you can continue to do so, or simply press the enter button to add what you have. As you can see, the citation now appears. 
And if you want to edit the citation, for example, to add more references to it, then select it. And then again, go to add slash edit citation. Now I've added my citation, I'll now create my bibliography or reference list. To do this, you simply select the area in your document where you want the list to be added. Then click on the add slash edit bibliography button. Now you can see that the list has been added. From this point on, if you add any additional citations, they should automatically be added to your bibliography. If they are not, you can simply click on the refresh button to add them. If you'd prefer that the references are not automatically added to your bibliography, then you can adjust the settings by going to the document preferences option. Then uncheck the option to automatically update the citations. And it's also worth noting here that you can change the citation style from this window too. A final thing to note in Word is that all Zotero citations and the bibliography are linked to your library. And this is so it can be updated. If you'd prefer to remove these links, you can select the unlink citations button here. Doing so will mean all of the citations and the bibliography will be converted to standard text. So that's another view of adding references in Word from your Zotero library. Let me now finish off by showing you how to add and edit citation styles in Zotero. Back in the Zotero software now, to add or edit citation styles in Zotero, you go to edit preferences. Then as before, select the site button and with the styles tab selected, you can browse the list of reference styles that you have installed. If you'd like to add more styles, you can then select the get additional styles link and this will open the Zotero style repository. It's then a case of searching for that style that you want in the list. And there's a good selection of journal styles already covered. If you mouse scroll over a style, you can preview what it looks like. To install it, you simply click on the style name. Alternatively, if you had a CSL style file already downloaded from elsewhere, you can install it by clicking on the plus button here. Finally, if you want to tweak the format of a particular style or create your own, then clicking on the style editor button will open up the advanced settings. And with that, that brings me to the end of this beginner's guide to Zotero. You should now know how to use Zotero to manage your references and cite them in a Microsoft Word document. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.